Hello, everyone. This is Mike McDaniel, the evangelist of the Central Church of Christ in Carothersville, Missouri. And uh, we are glad that you're watching our Wednesday evening devotional today. I want to speak today about attendance at church services. We began in Hebrews chapter 10, 24 and 25. Where the Bible says, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. The Hebrew brethren to whom these words were first addressed were experiencing tremendous pressure to give up Christianity and to go back to Judaism. Some had already settled into the custom of missing the services of the saints. The key word in that text is forsaking. When one is ill and is not forsake, he's not forsaking the assembly. If one is doing work that they must do, they have not forsaken the assembly. When one is out of town, but attending worship while out of town, he has not forsaken the assembly. The meaning of the text is that when a person misses services, when he could be present, but because of unconcern and indifference he stays away, he has forsaken the assembly. People who don't attend because they cannot are not willfully being absent at all. If they could do what they desire to do, they would be present. But the one who doesn't want to be present and so stays away abandons those services. In that case, Hebrews 10.25 has been violated and sin has been committed. Absenteeism is a problem with almost any congregation of the Lord's people. God will accept our reasons, but God has never accepted our excuses, and God knows the difference. In Luke chapter 14, Verses 16 to 24, you have the parable of the great supper. A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first one said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them, I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servants, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the behold and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded. And yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Well, we read how they all began to make excuses. <clears throat> Any man who, who buys property without looking at it is foolish. And so is the man who purchases oxen without first proving them. That would be like buying a car that you never test drove. The man who was newly married could have brought his bride with him. These people did not reject the invitation because they were involved in bad activities. There's nothing essentially wrong with real estate or plowing or enjoying your home. Most of the people who fail to attend worship and Bible study as they should are just too busy to think seriously about the spiritual and eternal consequences of what they are doing. Christians should never be guilty of making excuses, nor should we be looking for reasons to be absent. The hymn writer Francis Habergau gave several reasons for attending church, especially on rainy days. She said, God has blessed the Lord's day, making no exceptions for stormy days. I expect my preacher to be there. I would be surprised if he stayed home because of the weather. 
I might lose out on the prayers and the sermon that would have done me great good. For important business, rain doesn't keep me home, and church is in God's sight very important. Bad weather will prove how much I love Christ. True love rarely fails to keep an appointment. Those who stay home from church because it's rainy frequently miss on fair Sundays too. I must not take one step in that direction. Christ said, We're two or three are gathered together in my name. I am there in the midst of them. Matthew 18, 20. I don't know how many more Sundays God may give me. It would be poor preparation for my first Sunday in heaven to have slighted my last one on earth. Well, unfortunately, some do not feel that way about church attendance and their empty seat. Think about what an absentee's empty seat says. My occupant found greater joy in something else. My occupant did not seek the kingdom first. My occupant is not concerned with building up the local church. My occupant does not love God. To the preacher it says, Your sermon is not worth very much. Your preparations are useless and your efforts are not appreciated. To the visitor it says, There is not much interest here. To other members it says, Someone found something more interesting than this service. To the non-member it says, regular attendance is neither necessary or worthwhile. To the elders it says, some of the sheep are out of the fold. To God it says, there is something more important than worshiping thee. And to Christ it says, someone does not appreciate your sacrifice. Absentees rob God. The first day of the week is the Lord's Day, Revelation 1.10. To take his day and to use it solely for our own selfish desires is to take that which is not rightfully ours. It is to steal that which belongs to the Lord. Some have made the Lord's day their day, their day to recreate, their family day, their day to travel, their day to sleep late, their day to be idle, and their day to miss the services of the church. We thus stand convicted of robbing God, of stealing the Lord's day, for ourselves. Absentees catch their votes to close the doors of the church building. If we can rightfully miss a service, then every other member of the church can too. And if we can miss one, why not miss all of them? The church has the mission of evangelism, benevolence, and edification. If all stayed home, where would the church be and how could it fulfill its mission? There was a man who lived during the 21st century. He had a nice house, two cars, a shiny boat in his garage, a wine screen TV. His family was healthy, his custom when he was in town, when the fish weren't biting, when he was not at the golf course, when he had no company, when he had nothing else to do, was to go to church. When he went, he spent his time deploring the decaying state of the church. The Sunday school attendance was low, the congregation small, the offerings poor, and the preacher discouraged. They ought to do better, he said. What do they think Christianity is all about anyway? According to the way of the world, the man's children soon grew up. They did not go to church. The reason, their father insisted, was that the church members had not kindled an interest in the children. Eventually, the man's health failed. One day, he noticed the people down at church hadn't visited him. He went to the hospital, and they still did not come to see him. And lo, he was very angry. Where is the church, he demanded. Oh, somebody said, didn't you know? That church went out of business several years ago. Oh, he cried, they should never have let it die. Next week, we'll look at some reasons for attending services of the church. Thanks so much for listening today to our midweek devotional. We want to encourage you to attend our services. We meet tonight at 7 o'clock. For Wednesday evening Bible study and devotional, 
We meet each Sunday morning for worship at 1040. Bible class is at 945. We continue to study the book of Proverbs on Sunday morning. We encourage you to be with us. Till next time, this is Mike McDaniel with the Central Church of Christ in Crothersville. Have a good day.